Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 4 for December the 22nd, 2019. We're still in Unit 1 entitled David Honors God. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Graciously Accepting Praise. Our devotion reading is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 10. Our background scripture is taken from the Gospel of Luke chapter 1, uh, verses 39 through 56. And our print passage is also taken from the Gospel of Luke uh, chapter 1, verses 39 through verse 56. Our key verse reads, Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. And that's taken from uh, Luke chapter 1, uh, verse 46 and 47 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to survey the themes present in Mary's song of praise. Secondly, to value Mary's place in the unfolding story of God's saving work. And then thirdly, to commit to your own roles in furthering God's kingdom. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled, A Proper Response to the Spirit. Second outline is entitled, A Proper Response to the Savior. And then our third outline is entitled, A Proper Response to Salvation. And I am certainly humbled and thankful to God for yet another opportunity at this season. It's time to share this lesson uh, with you today, a very familiar passage of scripture uh, that we revisit uh, traditionally at this time of the year as we look toward the, uh, the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But it is something that uh, we should revisit uh, as often as we can just to um, <clears throat> stay afresh in what God has said, the origin, if you will, of how salvation was ushered in uh, to God's people and ultimately uh, to the world. But I want you to, if you will, prepare to uh, take some scripture uh, passages that I'm going to share with you and also uh, some notes. Uh, there's some things that uh, I want to lift uh, that uh, connected, that are very much connected with this lesson. Uh, but we have a lengthy uh, passage today that we want to deal with. So uh, let's begin with the biblical context of this lesson taken from our lesson quarterly. And I want to read just a little bit of this uh, by leading in Elizabeth, leaping in Elizabeth's womb at the sound of Mary's greeting to his mother. John began fulfilling his role as one who would declare and prepare the Lord's coming. Uh, Luke chapter 1 verse uh, 15 predicts that John would be filled with the Holy Spirit uh, before his birth. And also, the Holy Spirit in John, even in the womb, responds to the presence of Jesus. And I want to stop right there. Uh, and I just want to make mention here as we talk about the birth uh, of Christ in this account, and certainly uh, the birth of uh, John the Baptist. Uh, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25, and Luke, chapter 1. Uh, verses uh, 26 through 56 and also Luke chapter 2 verses uh, 4 through 7 so these are two complementary uh, but independent stories uh, both um, agree in their record of Jesus birth as a result uh, of a miraculous conception uh, his mother uh, Mary became pregnant by the Holy Spirit's creative action before she had any relationship with a man. This is Matthew chapter 1 verse 20 and Luke chapter 1 verse 35. But most Christians uh, accepted the virgin birth with, without hesitation uh, until around, uh, history says, the 19th century. Um, and then it became a pivotal issue uh, in the debate about Christian supernaturalism and the divinity of Jesus. 
uh, also modernism uh, hoping to and reinterpret Jesus as no more than a uniquely godly and insightful teacher uh, surrounded the virgin uh, birth with a spirit of uh, unnecessary skepticism and I just want you to see that as we look at this lesson today and the participants uh, in this uh, entire narrative as we deal with Elizabeth we deal with Zachariah and we also deal with Mary uh, as each one encounters uh, the angel Gabriel uh, but what I found interesting about this account is that all of these individuals uh, with the exception of Gabriel the angel uh, that uh, came and stands in the very presence of God was that they all responded uh, with a sense of skepticism you all remember uh, Zachariah uh, he questioned Gabriel uh, Elizabeth uh, she went and hid uh, for several months uh, and then also Mary had uh, some questions uh, about what the Lord was doing in her life and so what I'm sharing with you today is that there will always be different responses to the spirits moving uh, in our lives and, and certainly uh, in through the Word of God and, and, and sometimes we come away uh, with different reactions to uh, the things that God has told us but I want to make sure that we uh, respond uh, 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 to whatever the Lord is giving us and sharing with us concerning this narrative because uh, this uh, um, uh, debate if you will is still going on today this discussion about uh, Mary's uh, birth her conception uh, has always been at the forefront and so we just want to make sure that you understand that that whatever your response is uh, your belief system if you will that it is coupled with the Word of God uh, that's very important uh, and and a lot of these isms that 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 we're plagued by today even in our culture they are not supported by scripture uh, they are not supported by the account or the narrative that God has given to us so our role as believers is is and the proper response if you will is to believe uh, what God has told us and what he has shared with us through his words I want you to keep those things in mind so we want to get into this first outline entitled a proper response to the spirit and this is taken from Luke chapter 1 verses 39 through 44 and I want to read this from the NIV translation and we'll make some remarks and give you some scriptures concerning uh, uh, the role of the Holy Spirit because I think that's very important uh, that we understand that uh, the Holy Spirit has a role uh, God uh, through Jesus Christ said that he would have a role uh, and we need to make sure that we look for his role uh, in our lives so the Bible says at verse 39, at that time Mary got ready and hurried um, to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zacharias home and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And in a loud voice she exclaimed, blessed are you among women and blessed is the child you will bear but why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me verse 44 and as soon as the sound of uh, your greeting reached my ears the baby in my womb leaped for joy So, in response to the word uh, that the angel shared with Mary regarding the birth of Jesus you can see that in Luke chapter 1 verse 26 through 38 uh, Mary prepared herself to go to Judea to visit her uh, relative Elizabeth who was six months pregnant and so at the time of the angels announcement uh, with haste in verse 39 indicates a sense of urgency to witness what God was doing so this should be an aspiration to all Christians not to delay seeking the atmosphere 
and experiences of God wherever he is manifesting his presence and work and that is huge for us to understand uh, that that we ought to be in a hurry uh, and we ought to be encouraged and also inspired when we see the workings of God taking place uh, uh, in our midst so uh, but out of respect and it is tradition uh, when we approach someone especially when we walk into their house and we greet them uh, we render a salute uh, and so at that uh, moment <clears throat> that Elizabeth heard the greeting from Mary the Bible records that John while only six months in the womb leaped inside of Elizabeth uh, and so how do we know that except uh, the revelation that God is giving uh, these women to understand that he is working in them uh, he is manifesting himself in them uh, uh, and so they recognize and as we get a little bit further in Luke's gospel uh, and certainly in our lesson Mary will give praise to God because she understands the workings of the Holy Spirit and that is something that uh, if you would take a look at John chapter 16 uh, and also Romans chapter uh, 8 verse 4 but the Holy Spirit is that uh, mysterious third person of the Trinity through whom God acts reveals his will he empowers individuals and discloses his per personal presence uh, in the Old and New Testament so we have to expect as people of God the moving of God working in our lives and our proper response to this activity is to thank God because it does not have to be uh, these individuals have been uh, picked out if you will they have been chosen by God they have been uh, if you remember Zacharias was in the temple when Gabriel came to him and prophesied to him and and this is nothing new this is the manifestation of the Old Testament prophecies concerning John the Baptist and he being the forerunner that Israel should look for uh, 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 to usher them in to the salvation or the redemption that uh, Christ was bringing to them and so it's very important that we understand that God is uh, working in us and through us for a particular purpose and so this is nothing new but it is a, 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 a response if you will uh, of skepticism by these individuals uh, in this narrative because they don't understand how these things are supposed to be. Uh, Zacharias and Elizabeth are both aged individuals. Uh, Mary is uh, betrothed to Joseph but they have not had relations so how is this thing going to be and so uh, but what we should understand uh, Luke uh, chapter 1 verse 37 says nothing will be impossible for God so when you have the Holy Spirit working in your midst and through you and and it and manifesting himself um, uh, it should be understood that there is nothing that he cannot do. There is nothing that he cannot bring into subjection to the will of God. Uh, so the Gospel of John chapter 16, and I would encourage you to read, um, to go back to John chapter 14 and follow that through uh, chapter 15 and then into uh, chapter 16. And you will get some context here but this should not be so far-fetched to us to believe that God is working through an old woman and a young woman who has not had relations uh, with a man you and I were unsaved people engaged in all kinds of activities uh, over the course of our lives and somewhere along the line God stepped in and saved it 
saved us how do you think you got from where you are or where you were then to where you are now the same Holy Spirit that is engaged uh, with these individuals in this narrative has also been engaged in your life so as to bring you out so we want to want to remember these things um, that the Holy Spirit is doing because uh, uh, he is still at work in our lives he has a continuous role in our lives and in all of humanity uh, uh, even to convict the world concerning sin as John chapter 16 will help us to understand the question is asked here in the quarterly when the spirit is present in your life how do you move and what's your reaction and so that's what we're saying uh, we should get away from saying something told me uh, uh, who would this individual be that is telling you to do something that you are doing or that you may not be doing but 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 Jesus said my sheep know my voice and so a stranger they will not follow we should uh, 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 have been with the Lord long enough to understand that God is speaking to us God is using us God is talking to us God is revealing things to us and we need to give him the glory for that uh, and these manifestations if you will of the workings of the Holy Spirit God has made you a steward over those spiritual things uh, uh, that have taken place uh, uh, in your life and we don't need to be skeptical about the workings of the Holy Spirit we should expect it to happen because God said it would happen Jesus said it would happen Jesus uh, uh, sent the Holy Spirit to comfort to be with us to lead us and to guide us so you're going to hear him you're going to uh, uh, feel him you're going to see him and so these individuals um, in this narrative are watching the Holy Spirit through the angel Gabriel who has announced these things beforehand to if you will sort of take the edge off of them being angst about it when it happens and so uh, these two women now are engaged in uh, uh, what the Lord is doing uh, in their lives and Elizabeth understands that Mary is carrying a savior right we'll get there in this next outline uh, that is entitled a proper response to the Savior this is taken from Luke chapter 1 uh, verses 45 through 50 and again from the NIV translation the Bible says blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her just want to stick a pin in that blessed is she who believed that is the proper response that we shared earlier uh, uh, our call is to believe uh, that the Lord will fulfill if a word has been spoken out over your life or over a circumstance by God uh, <clears throat> through the Holy Spirit we need to look for the manifestation of that we need to expect the manifestation of that and so this is a it's a blessing for us to be able to believe though we have never seen it's a blessing for us to be able to believe what God says and expect him to bring these things to pass this has all been uh, 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 given to us throughout the Old Testament that has led us to this place that we are studying today that we're looking at today God has said this long time ago that he would do this and that he would bring about John the Baptist who would be his uh, forerunner if you will he would prepare the way uh, before Jesus came in to get the people uh, to get their hearts and their minds ready and prepared for the reception of salvation and this is what we're looking at today verse 46 says and Mary said my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant from now on all generations will call me blessed and I just want to stick a pin in this because Mary is now under the unctioning of the Holy Spirit she's being used uh, by the Spirit of God to give glory to God 
these are not quote unquote Mary's words based on her own intellect. She is speaking out of the unctioning of the Holy Spirit who is revealing all of these things uh, uh, to her and, 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 and causing her to speak to give God the glory. Let me say this to you. One of the ways that we can, we can discern if an individual is, a, is of God is to listen if they are giving God the glory. If they are giving God the praise, if they are recognizing that God is using them and they are not ashamed to say, these are not my own words as Jesus was accustomed to saying, I do the Father's will, the words that he gives me, I speak. We can always uh, look at these types of activities in our culture today because the Holy Spirit uh, will will unction us to give back to give the glory to God the origin of that blessing the origin of that manifestation the origin of that unction you should be able to tell even in your prayer life when the Holy Spirit has taken over with you or when the Holy Spirit is using you uh, you can see yourself growing in the knowledge of the truth things that you didn't know before now you understand them uh, just like plain language uh, has been spoken to you and so this is what is happening now this is a spiritual response here uh, from Mary she is speaking out of her soul and blessing God for her state she is blessing God for what has happened to her and verse 49 says for the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name his mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation she talks nothing of herself of, of, of something that she has caused to happen. She doesn't say it was all of my education, of all of my understanding. It was because of how I was living that, that this has happened to me. She's not saying she was lucky today. Uh, so you can see where I'm going. But, but she understands. She's telling us here in this passage, my soul, that inner man, that inner being is glorifying uh, the Lord in this event and so uh, Elizabeth further spoke into Mary's life uh, uh, making statements about an encounter she uh, would not have known about her she stated in addition to the blessing acknowledged earlier that Mary uh, was further blessed for believing what the angel reported and that uh, it shall come to pass because of her faith that is huge if we want God to do something in our lives, I believe Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 records it like this. He who comes to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder unto them that diligently seek him. And so uh, it is very important. We have to continue to believe what God has said to us. It doesn't matter how things look. It doesn't matter how bad the situation might appear to be. It doesn't matter what people have said negatively concerning you. Here's Elizabeth ashamed of the blessing that God has given her. And she is hiding uh, uh, for months uh, uh, about this pregnancy that she has here is Zacharias telling uh, Gabriel the angel that uh, uh, how can these things be they are questioning the authority they are questioning the power of God and subsequently they don't have faith in the power of God and so this is very important and this is why uh, angel Gabriel uh, uh, labors with Zacharias so as to afflict him. He labors with Elizabeth. He labors with Mary to, to convict them and to encourage them and to and, uh, inspire them to believe. And so this is one of the things that, that I love about the role of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so he brings things to our remembrance that we have forgotten that Jesus told us. He brings things back home for us. He 
puts things in perspective when you and I would be in utter despair uh, because of circumstances and issues in our lives. But the Holy Spirit comes and whispers in our ear and tells us everything is going to be all right. We have to believe that everything is going to work out. We have to believe that. Uh, you're going to be healed. We have to believe that. We have to take God at his word. Believe him at face value. And so these things uh, that, that, that uh, Gabriel is speaking to these individuals are out of the norm. They, they would not even be fathomed, uh, come to mind in, in a normal individual's mind. They could not see how these things could happen. But faith will get you there. Faith will go beyond uh, uh, what you think uh, 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 is capable of happening if you believe God and trust God and, 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 and understand that God has all power, not some. He has all power in heaven and earth in his hands. And so this is the thing that is happening to them. But uh, uh, so as the spirit moved and Mary recognized the reality of the Savior's presence in her life, Mary spontaneously uttered a song of praise. Praising God should flow naturally for those who love God, and for every moment we recognize God's goodness. You and I should understand that there is no way we should be alive at this time, saved, set apart, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, gifted and serving. But years ago, we were someplace else. We were in another seat. We were doing something else. So when you recognize the fact that God has brought you out with a mighty and an outstretched arm, that's a praise opportunity. Every time you remember what God has done in your life. That's an opportunity to give God the glory and the honor and the praise because it should flow, right? Every day that we get up in the morning and, and we understand that God kept us through the night, it's an opportunity to say, Lord, I thank you. If you are a person today, and I'm speaking to those of you that are commissioned, uh, 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 look where God has brought you from and all of the training and the things God have taught you and blessed you to be able to go forward in a way that is profound. So these things, uh, we need to think about these things and understand it was God. The, 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 the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you, is in me. The same power that God used, right, is in you. The same anointing is in you. And we have to recognize that that is going to remain with us. That is going to continue to groom us, to prune us, to make us what we should be. I hope you understand this. Question here, when you think of God's grace and mercy, how do you feel? So we've just discussed a, 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 a huge a, a part of our lives that, that we should use to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. It says when you think, <laughs> when you think about this thing, when you think about it, when you really rationalize, when you set your mind to just just go back a few days, yesterday, last week, two years ago, seven years ago, a hundred years ago, if you will, however it is that the Lord brought you every step of the way. That is something we have to think about. But we live in a culture where people are skeptical and they won't give God the glory they give the due to, the, you know, it was just my lucky day. It was just something else. God wants the glory for his activity in our lives. It was him. James says every good in the first chapter, every good and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. We have a clear direction of who it came from. We have a clear direction of who sent it. 
And we, could, we should be able to think about this thing that God is sitting on the throne and God is moving in our lives. God is bringing us where he wants us to be. When you think about it, what do you come up with? When you think about of where you could have been and what could have happened, when you think about that, it was an act of God's grace and his mercy and God says these words believe believe this is what the angel Gabriel was trying to get across to these individuals in this narrative he wasn't asking them to do anything he was going to do it they just needed to believe that he could do it he didn't ask them to help him he didn't ask uh, Mary to help him with a pregnancy he said I, I'm gonna do it I'm gonna overshadow you the Holy Spirit is gonna come over you and you're gonna be with child and you're gonna bring forth this Savior this is a beautiful lesson and I hope it's blessing you the last outline is entitled a proper response to salvation this is taken from Luke chapter 1 verses 51 through 56 and again from the NIV translation he has performed mighty deeds with his arm he has scattered those <clears throat> excuse me he has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts he has brought down rulers from their thrones but has lifted up the humble he has filled the hungry with good things but has sent the rich away empty he has helped his servant Israel remembering to be merciful verse 55 to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. So Mary stayed with Elizabeth, <clears throat> excuse me, for about three months and then returned home. He has done. He has performed. He has helped. He has filled. Can you see the Holy Spirit just using, you know, we have to give God all of the glory. He did it. He brought us out. He filled us up. He helped us. He performed mighty deeds. You know, so when we recognize these things, we are indebted to God. We are forever indebted to God. We used to sing a song some years ago entitled, I owe him everything. All that I have, everything I am, I owe it. I owe him everything. Mary's song continued with a further acknowledgement of God's power. God has already done mighty works with one arm and scattered those high in pride where arrogant actions take root and begin to manifest. All of this is accomplished by the Savior, our means of salvation, Jesus. With God's salvation reigning in this wicked world, Jesus has reversed the order of this world. Those high-minded leaders who feel they are untouchable and, and unmovable are replaced by those who are humbled as they are lifted up by God. I want to just stick a pin in this because I think it's important when we see this, and, and I certainly have, and I know that you have witnessed this reversal of order. I don't want you to gloat. I don't want you to boast. I don't want you to mock those individuals that God has uh, humbled them and then he raised you. Uh, uh, there are still individuals that need to be saved and I hope that you take an opportunity not to uh, uh, bash them about their fall uh, because it's, it, 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 it can be something that can happen to you. You should read the third, uh, the 11th chapter of the book of Romans. This is something that Israel had a problem with humbling themselves. They didn't want to subject themselves uh, 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 to the power, the knowledge of God. They thought they could do it on their own. Uh, and so they, they made a mistake. And so God began to raise the Gentiles, right? Other nations outside of the nation of Israel. And it made Israel jealous. It provoked Israel to jealousy. And so they thought that they had Abraham as their father. They didn't need Jesus. They didn't need what he had to offer. But my point is, don't get the big head, if you will, 
about what God is doing in your life when you see someone that has taken a fall or God has brought them down he humbled them and he wants to humble them where he can save them that's the point that I want to make these individuals still need to be saved but God the only way that God can uh, 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 help us is to bring us to a place where he can help us David found this out in Psalm 51 he said a broken and contrite spirit he would not despise and so it's important that we understand that we have to not just have the right spirit but we have to keep the right spirit uh, uh, I understand as though uh, this way I know God has blessed me and saved me but I know I didn't earn it right I know I didn't do anything to deserve it so I have to temper the things that I do and that I say with that understanding that it could have been me that was lost that was uh, uh, not saved that was uh, uh, you know caught up in all of these different things I thank the Lord for bringing me out but I also have to thank the Lord and pray for those who have not come out and so we we will see these things happen to high-minded people who feel like that God can't touch them who feel like God can't move them who feel like that they're going to uh, run roughshod over the the people of God and not going to have to give an account or be responsible to God for their action that is the wrong mindset so uh, uh, as we look a little bit further God has always helped his servants in a merciful way uh, meaning that that servant has not always been upstanding but God remain and remains faithful this extension of grace was released to Abraham and will continue throughout all times just as God has promised so the question is as salvation is ours extended to us by God share ways to show appreciation for your salvation we can be thankful we can be humble all right and we can be uh, encouragers of other people who need Christ to save them uh, but 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 we have to keep the right attitude as uh, Mary is speaking under the unction of the Holy Spirit uh, we are to give God the glory don't forget it was God that blessed you don't forget it was God that put you where you are today if you're on the top of the mountain today God put you up there right if you have a surplus and and you're doing so well the sun's been shining I just want you to know that's God doing that if he brought you out you didn't tell anybody you just escaped and you just thought that you know that you got out because it was you and it was about you but I just want you to know it was God's mercy that spared you those are the things that I think about and I think that we are we would do well to look at this story again as we said in the opening it's not something that we want to read uh, just at, at this time of the year as we look forward to the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ but look at the attitude and the unction of the Holy Spirit if we would allow him to use us God would always get the glory so as we get ready to close today I want to offer this prayer Lord Jesus as we enter this holy season approaching the holy day in which we recognize your dwelling with us here on earth let us be careful and mindful not to get caught up in the glitz and glamour of the season not only do we want to embrace you this season but we also want to truly share your love with others this season help us O Lord in Jesus name we pray amen so I have been blessed tremendously today by reading this lesson again and I'm going to read it again. I'm going to look at it again and pull at some more that the Lord will have me to understand. But there has been a shift um, from the uh, 19th century uh, where most Christians accepted this birth uh, without hesitation, right? But now it's a pivotal issue in the debate about Christians supernaturalism and the divinity of Jesus but it's not an issue if you just believe it's not an issue if you accept the account that God gave to us concerning his son through the means of Mary bringing uh, 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 his only begotten son into the world it's not an issue 
if you have experienced the Holy Spirit in your life that tells you the testimony is true if you are filled with the Holy Ghost and you are experiencing his power you know this narrative is true continue to build on those things and until such time that the Lord would permit us to come together again we say God bless you